Did our gents, I hope you guys are doing well and that you are managing during this lockdown period. You're not driving your parents up the wall. I thought I'd just put a little short lesson together of this number pads and section that is also in your textbooks. There might be a few areas that you're not too sure about. Hopefully this will iron out those issues and uh, help you to completely understand. Uh, there are a few things in this section that are pretty simple that I'm sure you guys already know how to do. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I'm going to be focusing more on the work concerning the general rule and number patterns. Okay, so let's get started. This will be familiar to you because this is from your textbook. In the section, you learn a few things. Uh, first of all, identify a pattern or relationship between consecutive terms in order to extend the pattern. That's the easy part. Make a general rule about the pattern with which you can find consecutive terms. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on the most now. And work with geometric patterns. Links quite well with the previous point. Okay, so a few examples of identifying the pattern and extending it. Here you can see we have a whole lot of terms here, consecutive terms. Okay, these are called terms, and they have positions as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. We see they they are going up by two. Every term is going up by two, so you're just adding two every time. So the next number after 14 will be 14 plus two, which is 16, as is shown over here very clearly. Here we have another a pattern it goes from three to seven to eleven to fifteen. So it's pretty clear that it's going up by four every time. So to get the next term after 15, you add four, and we'll get 19, and then after 19, you add four again and get 23, etc. The third one is a little bit different because it's not addition or subtraction, now we have multiplication. So you go from 1 to 3, you have to multiply by 3, from 3 to 9, you multiply by 3, from 9 to 27, multiply by 3. So to go from 27 to the next term, you'll have to multiply by 3 and you'll get 81. And you'll do the same with 81 to get to the next term if you want to. Here we just have a pattern involving shapes. So here we have these three shapes here. And you see that we're adding two here. Go from, from one, one, sorry, one square to three squares, you have to add two. From three squares to six squares, you have to add three. So you add a two, you add a three. The next one you're going to add four, as you see over here. And then the one after that you're probably going to add, add 5. Okay. Here we just have some fractions. makes it a little bit more interesting. We see the numerator, numerator adding 1 every time. We have 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. The denominator starting with add 3 and adding 4 every time. So as it shows here, add 1 to the numerator every time. And then add 4 to the denominator. Okay. I'm not going to go too much into this next one. Yeah, it's just exercise one. You have to identify the relationship uh, between the consecutive terms and write down the next two terms. That is the easy part. It's not that hard to identify a pattern and then to determine the consecutive term. I'm pretty sure you guys are, are able to do this on your own. And if you're stuck, please let me know. Okay. The, the, the more challenging part is finding the general rule for pattern, uh, but I'm going to explain it to you and I'm pretty sure you will get it very quickly if you haven't done so already. Okay, so the general rule for number patterns, it shows the relationship between the term and its position in the sequence. We often refer to this rule as Tn or the nth term. So we'll, you'll see a few symbols here, and I will explain what those symbols mean, because they do have a specific meaning. So when, when we do number patterns, one of the most common ones we, we find are ones with a constant difference between the terms. So most of the ones we've looked at already have that uh, type of uh, sequence. So this sequence over here, you go from 2 to 7, from 7 to 12, from 12 to 17. In other words, you're adding 5 every time. So that is your constant difference. Okay, 
constant because it's the same every time. So you're adding 5 every time. So what do these symbols mean here? T is a value. 1 is representing the position. So it's the value of the first term. This one is the value of the second term. The value of the third value of the fourth term. N, which we see over here, N represents the position. But like I said here, that's N usually, so that position is the first one. But T is the value. If you understand that, it will really help you a lot going forward. You don't want to get confused between the two. So here what they're saying is the value of the fourth one minus the value of the third one is equal to the value of the third one minus the value of the second one, which is equal to the value of the second one minus the value of the first one. It gives you five. It's just a way of illustrating that they have a constant difference. You don't, you know, that you won't be asked that sort of question or to write that out in a test. It's just a way of showing you that the constant difference is five. Okay. So let's do an example. Here we have a sequence 3 to 7 to 11 to 15. Determine the general rule of the sequence. When they say the general rule, that's another way of writing it in symbolic form. Okay. The general rule. So how do we do that? Like we saw in the previous example, you first look for a constant difference. So what is the difference between each term? And is it constant? In this case, it is. We have, we are adding 4 every time. And by the way, Constant difference isn't always addition, it can be subtraction. So if this is written the other way around, 15, 11, 7, 3, then our constant difference wouldn't be plus 4, it would be minus 4. Okay, so let's deal with the first question before we get to these ones. You're adding 4, that is your constant difference. So remember your general rule over here. Tn is equal to... 4n minus 1. That's your answer. But you will, you're going to start off with the difference. And the difference is 4. Okay? So you write down 4. Just write down 4. That's it. That's all you need to write down. And then it's always going to be 4 times n. So it's always going to be the constant difference times n. Now what is n? n is the position. So you can pick any one of these as long as you write. Substitute the position in there. So let's take the first position. Remember, this is the first term. So its position is 1. So you put 4 times 1. What is 4 times 1? 4. But the value of the first position is not 4. The value of the first position is 3. So you put 3 in there. So you've got like a little equation going on. So 3 equals 4. So what must you do to this 4? Because 3 doesn't equal 4. 3 equals 4 minus 1. So this minus 1 over here, you need to work out. It is not going to be given to you. It's not always going to be minus 1. Sometimes it's going to be plus 2 or plus 5 or minus 6. It can be anything. The point is, you get this value by applying the method that I just explained. So let's recap that. First thing you do if you get asked to determine the general rule, you find the constant difference. The constant difference in this case is 4. So you write down 4. Okay? And then 4 times n. So you pick any position. I usually pick 1. So 4 times 1. Okay? But then you write the value, you have to write the value of that position on this side of the equal sign, Tn. Remember T stands for value. So you've got 3 here equals 4. Now you need to do something to this 4 times 1 to get it to equal this side of the equal sign. Otherwise this equal sign means nothing. Remember equals means it's the same. So you've got 3 equals 4 and then it's going to have to be minus 1 to be correct. Alright, gents. I hope that makes sense. We'll look at some more examples just now. Find the 58th term in the pattern using the general rule. That's the next question. So 58th term. That's its position. We need to find the value of that term. So 
Remember, position must go in the place of N, because N represents position. So then you're going to write 58 in N's place. So you will have to say uh, 4 times 58 minus 1. And that is going to give you your value of the 58th term, which is 231. So the value of the 58th term is 231. But they can also ask it the other way around, like this. Which term in the sequence has a value of 39? So now you don't put that 39 in the n position, because n represents position. This is a value, so you have to put it in t's place. So you have to put it in this on this side. Okay, so if we scroll down, we'll see 4n minus 1 equals 39. So that means if you take that 1 away, that means you have to add 1 to this side. So you get 4n equals 40. Now what times 4 gives you 40? Because that's what n's position is. 4 times 10 gives you 40. So n equals 10. What does that mean? What does it mean if n is 10? That means the position of this value is 10. So they said which term in the sequence has a value of 39. So we know that the 10th term in this sequence will have the value of 39. This saves you time. You don't have to write out the sequence until you get to the 10th term. Does that make sense? Because we can ask you um, much bigger numbers that are going to take you very long to write out the sequence in order to get to the 10th term or whatever term it is. Here's another example that we're going to have a look at. Given this sequence, determine the general rule. So you'll see this is a common question. Well, what is the first thing we need to do? Like we did above, you have to look for the constant difference. What is the constant difference here? To so go from negative 2 to negative 5, and from negative 5 to negative 8, and from negative 8 to negative 11, you have to subtract 3. You subtract 3 from negative 2, you get negative 5, etc. So that is our constant difference, negative 3. So you write down negative 3 times 1. That would be the position. The, so if, you're first, if you choose your first position, you're negative 3 times 1. But the first position's value over here is negative 2. And negative 3 times 1 equals negative 3 not negative 2. So what do we need to do to negative 3 to get it to negative 2? You have to add 1. So that answers our question here. So Tn will equal negative 3n plus 1. Now you can use that general rule to answer the questions that follow. And here's a, a lovely exercise which you guys can do that will help you to apply the lesson that you've learned regarding general rule. Here they give you the general rule already, so that's not too bad. They've given it, they've given it to you already, and you need to determine the first three terms. So let's have a look at this quickly. If you put, if you, the first term would be position one, so you put one in the end space, and we call it a substitution. Like when you substitute someone on the, on the sports field, you replace them. So you replace the n with 1. That will give you 1 plus 2, which will give you the value of the first term, which is 3. Then you substitute 2 in there for the second term. So 2 plus 2 is 4. And then for the uh, third term, you 3 plus 2 is 5. So you get um, it was 3, 4, and 5. And you do the same for all of these to get the value of the first three terms. To determine the hundredth term, you put a hundred in here. A hundred plus two. That's going to be 102 for question 2.1. Okay. I know I've gone through these things quite quickly and it's, it's quite difficult sometimes to explain without writing on a, on a whiteboard to you what I'm thinking. But, gentlemen, uh, you are, feel free to, to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video or you are welcome to send me a private message and I'll get back to you. Right, all the best.